Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. We are getting our Christmas DIY game on. Let's get crafting. For this DIY, I will be using these Dollar Tree mini trees. You need to take your tree, take some green paint, and guess what? You wanna paint it green. Once you get it painted green, you wanna grab yourself a pack of these mini mason jars, also from Dollar Tree. This is the Christmas variation of the little pumpkin one that I made that was super popular with you guys. I started off by taking some of the fake snow from Dollar Tree and I started to put it in there and then I realized, oh, back up, Courtney, you probably need to secure your tree first. So I took some hot glue, stuck it on the bottom of my tree, used a little, some tweezers to get that placed inside the bottom of the mason jar, then sprinkled a little bit of snow inside of the jar. Now it's time to work on the light feature. So you could use one of these battery operated can votive candles from Dollar Tree and stick it on there. That's what I did for the fall version, but also the glass mug was a little bit larger. So I felt like that just fit better with the larger mug. So for this mini one, what I decided to do is I took one of these packs of fairy lights. I buy a huge pack of these on Amazon. I will definitely link as I always do everything in this video down below in the description box. So if there's something you wanna see, check down there. And I decided what I was gonna do is take the fairy lights and just wrap them inside of the lid. So I just went loop-de-loop, -loop, circle, circle all the way around. And once they were in there, I needed to kind of secure those in there. So I didn't wanna put tape across cause it would kind of dim the light feature. So what I actually did was I had a pack of these green sequins and I trimmed a little piece of that plastic off and then just measured it the size of the lid, trimmed off the extra, and then on the edges, I used a little bit of tape just to, just to secure that clear piece down. And then that way the lights weren't dimmed at all. They were still shining very bright. Then taking some hot glue, I hot glued around the edge of the mug and set my lid down on top of that, just making sure that I had the little tail of wire sticking out so that I could turn the lights on and off. And now for the last step, you can see here, I've grabbed some red and white check fabric. I got this from Hobby Lobby. And what I did is just cut a square of that. And I took some hot glue, put a little blob of it on the top of the lid just to kind of tack the fabric in place. Then taking some twine, I went ahead and tied that around the top of the jar. And then I trimmed it after it was all secured on the lid. That way I could kind of see how much I needed to trim off. And once that's done, this little thing is ready to be displayed. It is the perfect size for tiered trays or just that little something extra that you might need on a bookshelf or a coffee table. But I absolutely love how this one turned out. Moving into this project, I am starting with one of these wooden star trays from the Dollar Tree. Now, my original thought, and I am gonna show you a little bit of what I started to do because I just like to keep it real here. I, I wanted the inside of this star to be navy, maybe a blue ombre thing going on. I just, honestly, I wasn't quite sure, but I knew I wanted blue. I had some blue metallic paint, I had different shades. So I started to paint it. When I had painted, when I painted the first coat of the blue paint, I was like, you know what? This is just not going to work. So I took the star outside and I spray painted it gold. While my gold star was drying outside, I grabbed this little wooden nativity pack from Dollar Tree, pulled out the stable, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus in the manger. Then I took some of the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink. If you wanna be fancy, you can say I used ink colored paint, but you can also say, hey, I painted it black. So here are all the parts of my project so far. I'm gonna start by taking the star and I want to hot glue down the pieces um, that I painted black. So I'll start with the stable. I'll just glue that down kind of to this in the center of the star, then Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. The next step is you just wanna pick up something sharp. So here I am using this tool. You guys see me use it all the time. And here I go again, not ever remembering how it's pronounced. Your owl, your owl, whatever. Grab an ice pick if you have it. You could use your rotary tool if you have one and drill the little hole, but honestly, this wood is super soft. So just 
channel your inner Wonder Woman and it's easy to poke through this. So on each star, each little segment of the star is going to get a total of three holes. So that means you're going to end up punching through with your strong muscles, 15 holes in the star. Where you punched all of those holes, we are going to be adding fairy lights to it. So I'm using another one of these strands of fairy lights. I buy these in packs. The last pack I bought had like half of them warm, half of them cool, and they were super cheap. I've also got the colored ones. So if you're looking for good fairy lights, again, this will all be linked down below. You just want to take where there is a light and just kind of crimp the wire, just kind of squeeze it together. And then you just want to poke it through the hole. I'm going to use scotch tape to kind of secure everything in the back. And then once the lights are in there, this beautiful nativity is ready to be displayed. Here's an easy DIY alert. I made a gingerbread printable. So on this printable, there are 12 different gingerbread houses. I found these images on designandbundles.net. I will definitely link it down below in case you want to make a larger version of these houses and do several different big house printables. Um, and I'll also link this printable down below. All we're gonna do is add this to a frame. Now I sized the printable down to an eight by 10 frame. At some point, I actually broke this frame when I don't even know. I must have set it down on the desk really hard. So I'm actually going to be putting my printable in here without any glass, which is totally fine. I don't mind that look at all. I did need to trim just the extra part off because obviously I printed it on an eight and a half and a by 11 page, but the printable itself is eight by 10. And I'm just going to stick it in there. Now, I want to know this. So inside this frame, there was a rubber ducky patent thing that I had used in my son's like bathroom decor. Does anybody else, when you take a frame and want to replace the picture, keep the previous picture in there? So it's like a treasure hunt thing. Like when you go to change the picture again, there's like eight pictures in there. Am I the only one who does that? Let me know down in the comments if you do. And you guys know it, this is going to go in my gingerbread kitchen and I will definitely be doing a gingerbread tour of my kitchen. I'll tack it on to one of my upcoming videos. I will be working with these wooden snowmen that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby for the next DIY. I'm going to start by painting his body white. Now here are some other options of what you could use this project for. You could turn it into an ornament. You could easily turn it into a, a napkin ring. You could tie a scarf around its neck, tie that around the napkin and then pull it back around if you know what I'm saying. Make it like that. You could easily just kind of leave it plain, set it on a tiered tray, set it in a snow globe, what have you. But what I'm going to use it for is to do place settings at our Christmas morning breakfast table. So every Christmas morning after we open gifts, we have a huge breakfast. And so I thought it would be kind of fun just to have this at each of the place settings. So the body is white. I'm just using chalk paint and the hat is going to be painted black. Now, if you're sitting down, good, because if you've been with me for a while, you're going to be shocked at what I'm about to do. I decided that it needs glitter. I know, I can't even believe I'm saying that. I just really am not a fan of working with glitter, but I felt like the sparkles just needed to happen at Christmas time. So I painted the hat with some Mod Podge and then I literally just dipped the snowman head or hat, I should say, into the glitter and let that dry really, really well. All right, here I am showing you something that didn't work out. <laughs> So my original plan was to use felt as this for the scarves. And then I was going to hand stitch the names on to the felt with some white embroidery floss. Well, the felt scarves couldn't be super thick. And by the time I started to try to do a running stitch on it, it just, it was not looking good at all. It just really was not going well. So I, and I didn't want to use iron on, I wanted to make it, you know, cricket free friendly. So I scrapped that idea and decided that I would use some uh, fabric for the scarves. And this is the same red and white checked fabric that I used in the little mini uh, jar tree project that I did earlier in the video. And I just cut pieces of it. I snipped the ends of it and I tied it around each of the snowmen's necks. 
since the names on the felt didn't work out, I needed a second plan to get some names. So I decided to use some of these wooden stars that came in a huge pack from Hobby Lobby. And I just took some gold paint and I did paint the front and the back of each of the stars. Now the snowmen did need faces. So what I did is I grabbed my black paint pen and I gave each of them two kind of smallish eyes. And then I did a carrot nose. I opted not to give them mouths or to put buttons on the belly. I just kind of like the eyes and the nose look, but you definitely could do whatever you prefer. Now it's time to poke his sides with a sharp pointed tool again. And I just kind of wing this. Now at first I started, as you can see here, just kind of twisting my wrist back and forth, but then I realized the easier way, just take something, kind of stick it in there and then just go in circles with your wrist just a little bit. It doesn't need to be a super big hole. Now I'm gonna be using some brown wire, floral wire that I have on hand, but you could use pipe cleaners. You could go find real tiny twigs outside in your yard, whatever you wanna use for the arms. So for the first one, I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. So I cut two pieces and I just took a little bit of hot glue kind of squirted it in those two little holes and then shoved the floral wire into the sides where I poked the holes and I put the glue. Now, before I go too much further, I did want to write the names on the stars. Don't mind the black glitter. I'm trying to be one with the glitter. Just, you know, woo saw the glitter. And so I decided just to take that black paint marker that I used on his face and I just wrote the names. You can kind of see that I start in the middle. That's just so I can make sure that the name will fit when I'm writing them. But you, if you have a Cricut, you're welcome to do that. Or if you can find itty bitty tiny stickers or you could even stamp the names if you wanted to, that would look really cute as well. So to pull this together, what's gonna happen is I wasn't quite sure if I wanted this star to be in the front and for him to kind of hold it with his little arms. After I kind of messed with it, I was like, mm, not sure that I really like that idea. So what I ended up doing was I decided that I was gonna glue the star and have it like he was holding up the sign on one side. And um, on the other side, what I did is I took a little piece, I kind of made a little, as you can see, I folded the wire over it, made a little V, and then I just trimmed off the extra wire. So it's kind of like his arm had a little piece that folds over and you could put a little glue there if you wanted to, but it held it in place just fine. And I have to say the possibilities for these are endless. You could personalize each one. You could make them holding little snowballs, get the little mini pom-poms. You could get those mini trees from a Dollar Tree. I mean, you could find miniatures that, you know, have to do with each of person in your family to kind of customize them. So lots of options here. Now, the last step is I definitely needed to secure that glitter so that it would not fall in people's foods or their drinks or what have you. So all I did for this, and honestly, I, I, I just, I was so excited about making these. I should have done this step right after I put the glitter and it dried on the hat before I started decorating it. But all you wanna do is just take some hairspray. I just have this little bottle of the Tresemme hairspray. I find that one works really well because when you spray it on the glitter, it doesn't dull the glitter down. You wanna hold the spray kind of back you know, not super close, maybe eight inches to 10 inches away from it and just spray the hats. They will be fine. They will turn out sparkly. Everything's good to go and the glitter won't fly everywhere. I absolutely love how these little placeholders turned out. That wraps up another round of Christmas DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite. Also let me know what is your favorite Christmas song? I have been listening to Christmas music for about two weeks now, but I absolutely love Christmas music. So let me know down below what is your favorite song. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really do appreciate it. Check out these videos if you want some more Christmas DIY inspiration and I will see you in the next one. Bye.